Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear learners to the another session of International Business Management. I am Dr. Manisha Goswami, Assistant Professor at Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Matra. Today we are going to talk about the international institutions and agreement in lecture number 7. Before we start with lecture number 7, let us quickly review what we did in our previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we had discussed about the international business approaches like ethnocentric approach, polycentric, regiocentric, geocentric approach and even we talked about the different stages of globalization like starting from domestic company to international company, from international company to multinational company to global companies and then to translational companies. Third, in that discussion, we also come to know about the various MNCs. We come to know about the relationship the MNCs are sharing with the headquarters and the subsidiary and how India is getting benefit out of these MNCs, how they are helping in developing the technology, how they are helping in increasing the economy of the nation. This is what we did in the previous lecture. Now, we are going to begin with the next lecture, lecture number 7 on the, and let us look at the learning objectives of lecture number 7. Here in this particular lecture, we will be focusing on the various institutions which are there for promoting the trade and also the institution that will financially support the uh, developing countries or underdeveloped countries to overcome and regain the losses or the difference or the negative balance of payment of their country. So let us begin with the lecture number 7 and with the quote of Thomas Piketty. What Thomas Piketty stated that protectionism does not produce wealth and free trade and economic openness ultimately in everyone's interest. That means that if you try to confine your boundaries and not let the foreign investors to invest in your country by imposing heavy tariffs or by non-tariff imposement, you might be restricting your country's growth. So, if you allow your country to allow the foreign investors, if you set certain policies which is going to allow the foreign investors to invest in your country, then it is going to flourish the economy of your country. It is not only the betterment of the foreign investor, it is also for the betterment of your home country. This is what Thomas Piketty stated and this is very true. Even in the case of India, during the year 1991, India went to, in the year 1990, India went to IMF asking for certain fund because the India was undergoing a lot of financial crisis. IMF lent the money to India, but with the term and condition of having LPG policy execution in India. And thereby, we could see that India adopted in the year 1991 LPG policy under the Prime Ministership of P.V. Narasimha Rao and Finance Ministry of Dr. Manmohan Singh. Since then, we, our economy is improving and growing and flourishing. Now, let us look at the essential international trade business. International, when it comes to the international trade, there are certain essential, what? Essential pillars. There are certain essential pillars. One is your IMF, second is your WTO and the third one is your World Bank, also known as IBRD. So, international trade or else we can say international business, having three essential pillars. What IMF is doing? IMF is actually helping a country to come out from their negative balance of payment. What they usually do? They try to facilitate a particular country who is having negative balance of payment by funding them. But they do have their certain terms and condition which a country has to follow. A moment before I just told you that in the year 1990, India went to IMF for asking for certain funds to support the economy of India. They are ready to support it, but they asked India to come up with LPG policy in the year 1991. Ask LPG in country to come up with LPG policy and they actually executed it. We will talk about the IMF much more in detail in upcoming lecture. 
Now let us look at the, the World Trade Organization. What World Trade Organization is into? They are into having free trade. They are into executing what? Free trade among the nations. Among the nations. It is not just that you are going to have a free trade for the various, uh, maybe you are the part of the American continent, you are a country of American continent, maybe the north and the south, you are just facilitating among yourself. It is not like that. It is going to be the cross development through the interaction of the different country from one continent to another continent. What is the job of the World Bank and IBRD? Their job is to provide loan again. But for the devastated countries, devastated countries means the country who suffered from the world war, second and first even. Countries suffered badly from this, this was the purpose. Any country suffering from any sort of the natural calamity also nowadays, but earlier when it was established, the purpose is to regain the economy which different countries has lost because of the world war first and second. That was the first prime pers perspective of uh, coming up with the World Bank IBRD. IBRD stands for International Bank for Reconstructional and Development. Reconstruction means that you are restarting what you have lost, regaining what you have lost because of the world war first and second. So, prime focus of IBRD was initially towards the Europe and then later to the various other developing nations. Right? So, this is just the glimpse. Now, let us quickly try to see that how and why there was a need of coming up with World Trade Organization. In the previous slide, we just stated that protectionism does not produce wealth. Protectionism does not produce wealth. That means, if you are having strict policies, strict licensing duties for foreign investor to invest in your country, what is going to happen? There will be no import or export. What? What is going to happen? Say for example, if you are having a tough regulations related to your import and export, you must be having a negative balance of payment. What you would be having? You would be having a negative balance of payment. Negative balance of payment is usually because imports are high and exports are, exports of the country are low. That is why the BOP is going to be negative. Then the question arises if my imports are very high because of which my BOP is getting negative, then whom to go, whom to plea for? IMF is the body to help you. IMF is going to be the body who is going to help you to overcome this negative balance of payment. The moment I told you this before, that IMF is going to help the country having negative balance of payment, right? So, if in case you are having high imports and less of exports, then your BOP is going to be negative and whom to contact is IMF, but IMF is not going to fear, is not only going to give you the fund, but also going to give you the solution how this particular problem can be regained and overcome and the same kind of solution we people also got in the year 1990 that is execution of LPG policy in a country. But if we look into this perspective in much more detail that as we cannot stop import. We have to take import for sure, undoubtedly. Import cannot be ignored at all. Because every next country is not into production of all the things. And if even if they are trying to do the production of all the things, it's not a good choice because it's ultimately going to increase the cost. So, okay, fine. We will be having some portion of the import. But how we can still overcome this problem? Okay, fine. That we will be having some portion of the import. We need to purchase certain uh, things then import is going to be there for sure. But as import will be there, fine, but there should be a significant increase in the export. Imports are more, but exports are less. Here, what we need to do, we are having the import, okay, fine with this, but equally you need to push your exports. You need to incre increase your exports then the situation of the deficit is going to be overcome and balance of payment can be sustained. But the problem arise when countries, what countries are doing, countries are imposing restriction on import. See, I am importing certain things from you and I produce product in my country, okay, 
and now I am going to be the exporter of the finished good to your country and you have imposed duty on it and because of your heavy duty I couldn't export my commodity or goods and services to your country because of which what is happening I, I, my exports are going down and imports are still the same. So country need to do what? Country equally need to overcome the barriers. Why imports are, are getting very costlier for the people? Because of the barriers, right? Barriers can be the tariff. There are certain tariffs which are going to be imposed and they are non-tariff barriers also. Right, tariff barriers are going to be on the price, whereas non-tariff barriers are going to be on the quantity. So, country need to reduce the barriers of the import because I am an exporter, I am ready with the product, but your country is not accepting my product because and I, it is going to be very costly for me to export my product to you, to your country because you have imposed lot of import duties for your people to bear maybe on the tariff duties or the non-tariff duties because of which there is a discouragement of export. Here the role of WTO comes. This kind of the situation is actually helped and overcome by World Trade Organization. But before World Trade Organization, what was there? Before this World Trade Organization, there was a GATT. What GATT used to do? In, in 1947, uh, different country members come together and what they did, they decided to form a general agreement on tariffs and trade, which actually came into practice. This was, this was happening in the October 1947. Some of the country come after knowing this kind of the situation is happening, prevailing balance of payment is getting negative because other countries are imposing a lot of import duties because of which I as a company could not export my product to you. So people sit together and decide amicably, let's find out the solution to it. In October 1947, different country members sit and they form a body known as General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which came into practice in January 1948. And it continued to function till 1994. And thereafter, in the January 1995, there was a new body or the successor of the GATT that is what known as WTO, World Trade Organization. Why there was a need to shift from the general agreement on tariff and trade to World Trade Organization? Let us discuss them in much more detail. As you just know, the background and the picture why there was a need of coming up with World Trade Organization. The only answer is the negative balance of payment. Different countries were struggling hard to export their product. Import cannot be neglected, that is true, acceptable, but export should be initiated. And for initiating the export, the other countries should have a liberal import duties. But other countries are not having a liberal import duties because of which negative balance of payment is happening and increasing a burden over IMF to raise the fund for those countries. So this call for the formation of the body like WTO and General Agreements and Tariffs and Trade. World Trade Organization was established on 1st January 1995. Government had concluded the Uruguay Round negotiation on 15th December 1993 and Minister had given their political backing to the result by signing the final act at the meeting in Marrakesh, Morocco in, in April 1994. The Marrakesh Declaration on 15th April 1994 affirmed that the result of the Uruguay Round strengthened the world economy and lead to more trade, investment, employment and income growth throughout the world. The World Trade Organization is the embodiment of Uruguay Round result and successor of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. The World Trade Organization has largest membership uh, uh, than the GATT. The present number of member stands is 164. India is one of the founder member of the World Trade Organization. Now let's try to see the difference between GATT and WTO, why there was a need for coming up with the change. So general agreement on tariff and trade permitted continence of si same side agreement between the specific number of groups. On the contrary, WTO administer a unified package of agreement to which all member countries are committed. So somehow it is more facilitating than the previous one. It is more easier 
than the previous one. The coverage limit is in case of the general agreement and tariffs was limited, it was just focusing on the goods part, the services part was not there. So, in the WTO, they even included the services part, they even included the intellectual property also into consideration. Intellectual properties like copyright, patent, trademarks, right, so are also going to be included in the purview of the World Trade Organization. It was not very much effective when it comes to the execution and practically seeing how it was working. There were a lot of glitch into the system of the general agreement and tariffs and trade, but those glitches were removed by World Trade Organization. Gray areas measure are outside at purview of the general agreement and tariffs, but here in the case of WTO, even the gray areas were taken into consideration like textile, clothing, agriculture were also become a very essential part of the WTO for enhancing the economy of the world. Membership was not so large of the general agreement and tariff and trade, where in case of WTO, where each almost each and every country is excited to be the part of WTO because they are going to get the most favored nation, uh, most favored nation status after becoming a member of WTO. Settlement between member country was not so smooth because there were no dispute settlement or grievance handling machinery under the general agreement and tariff and trade, where in case of WTO, there is a specific body treating or taking care of the dispute and reset and working on overcoming and resolving the conflicts among the member countries. Now let us look at the structure and with this structure it will become more clearer that different areas where WTO is predominantly working. So there is going to be a ministerial conference and within the ministerial conference there is going to be a dispute settlement body exclusively working for handling the dispute or grievances among the member country if any. Second is a general council and general council is having different and varied area of functionality like training and development. They are into goods council, they are into the service council, they are into intellectual buyer, property rights, right. So they have the varied area and every specific department is having a specified the secretariat and the workers to facilitate the smooth execution across the globe. And the one is a trade policy review body which keep on reviewing what different upgradation and modification we need in the policy of World Trade Organization to adjust ourselves with the advancement which is taking place in the technology. The certain principles of the WTO, one very important principle that WTO focus on that there should be no discrimination on the basis of the economy of the country. When you are the member of WTO, you are going to get the most favored nation treatment and it is going to be a national treatment also. It is not going to be on the basis of the status of your economy, it is not on the, on the basis of the level of your economy, maybe the developed, developing or underdeveloped, but you are the member of WTO. There will be a free flow of business with you even. Reciprocity is there, that means that you are going to be reciprocal to what you are doing for the other nation and other nation has to reciprocate what they you did, right. That is, this is going to be a mutual agreement between the various member nations of the WTO. Market access is going to be easier now with the advent of the WTO and the, you become a member of a WTO. Then there is going to be a whole globe as a single market for you. Your market access become easier and there will be a fair competition which will further motivate you to get into international trading and international business in order to reduce your negative balance of payment which actually helped India earlier. The India was, was borrowing a lot of money from IMF. Now India become a contributor to IMF in the recent year. Now let us look at the objective of the WTO. Objective of the WTO predominantly revolve around what promoting trade flow by encouraging nations to adopt non-discriminatory and predictable trade policy. That means there should be no discrimination on the basis of the country economic status. Every country should be given equal and equal and uh, equal opportunity to do trading with you if they have the substantial amount of the quantity or the quality standards match with your country standards, then there should be a trading with each other. Raising standard of living income, promoting full employment, expanding production and trade and optimum utilization of world resource start taking place because of this World Trade Organization. Because World Trade Organization asks the country to remove the barriers and once they start removing the barriers, different country resources become an open market resource for the different people to make use of. And with, the, with this kind of approach, the left out resources or the resources which were not touched have been started taking care of people start 
making use of it eventually what start happening is start generating the employment and once the employment start generating the income level of people also start improving introduce sustainable development that means growing just for once it's not the purpose purpose is to grow for last right we are growth prog uh, chart should keep on progressing there should not be fluctuation and should not go stagnate right that is what the perspective of the world trade organization is taking step for improving the situation of developing and particularly least developed country this is uh, the prime focus because what they realize that there are a lot of potential in the underdeveloped and developing countries but because they didn't get any access to the resources or the support from the developed nation they are still not able to do well so they need to improvise the system and such a perspective with that perspective wto start extending the support to developing and underdeveloped nations establish procedure for resolving trade dispute among members because when two people will be doing business or trading there will be for sure a chance of the clash or this difference of opinion so such difference of opinion will also be handled which was not possible in the previous or the preceder of wto that is gat now uh, there is another very important body which was formed in along with the collaboration of wto that is uncad this they have joined this force to ensure better functioning to the multinational trading system in 2003 both the bodies signed the memorandum of understanding and the perspective is to promote what cooperation and cons uh, consultation on the technical assistance for the conduct of joint studies of the selected is uh, the selected issues like this and uh, start interacting very frequently and they start doing trade and they start finding which particular country need more support right apart from that uh, it's not just the wto who is into it. there is another body of the wto like unc tad equally helping and supporting the growth and free trade across the globe So UNCTAD stands for United National Conference on Trade and Development support developing countries to access the benefit of a globalized economy more fairly and effectively and help them to deal with the potential economic integration to do this UNCTAD I provide analysis facilitate consensus building and offer technical assistance this help them to use trade investment finance technology as vehicle for inclusive and sustainable development that means how uncdad is facilitating the developing countries to improveize their economy and how they are giving the fair chances for developing countries to make use of or to make use or access the various different advanced resources of the developed nation by training them by educating them right so knowledge imparting is taking place which is actually helping the de developing nation to realize their rights to understand that these different options and alternatives are available in the world, world market which they might not be knowing So UNCTAD meet once in every 4 year in recent conference the focus was directed on how developing nation musical traditions could alert youth worldwide to press the development issues like aids poverty and national debt so they start looking for what can be the probable way of overcoming certain major issues like that of the dates like uh, the bad debts are happening at a national level some of the countries uh, i uh, there's an example of uh, mexico of the year 1980 they declare that they won't be able to pay debts the so such kind of the issue should not arise in future so what kind of the uh, what kind of actions or measures we should take in order to create the awareness and necessity of letting the people know so they found music is going to be one of the uh, very fun learning mode of the mechanism which will help the people to understand the importance of paying the debts on time right and it will also help the people that how they can overcome the poverty and how they can understand the issues of the aids and how they can protect themselves let's look at quickly the functions of united nation conference on trade and development let look at this point that comprehend option to address macro level development challenges there are certain challenges at a macro level so their focus is on overcoming them and their focus is on finding the various alternatives through which a particular country who is struggling hard in terms of the balance of payment to how it can be overcome how i can help them how i can extend my support and assistance to them that is the main function of uncdad 
Next is achieve beneficial integration into international trading system, right? You need to understand that what you are having and what other countries are having so that you can better integrate with each other in the international trading system. Diversify economy to make them less dependent on commodities, limit their exposure to financial volatility and the debts, attract investment and make it more development friendly is another very important function that means that whatever the development and advancement you are coming up is good for the your company or is good for the nation but at the same time you have to see the repercussions of the development on the eco in, on the ecology of the world so you have to see how it is going to affect the environment it should be equally environment friendly and the development should facilitate the development of other nations as well it should not be purely your own country development your development should calls for the development of nearby neighbor, neighbor, your neighbor or the nearby countries in increase access to digital technology right so they are facilitating and improving the technological advancement even in underdeveloped and developing nation promote entrepreneurship and innovation by giving a lot of options for they are starting up their business and they are educating and training the people that how they can initiate how they can take the risk of starting fund and how they can get the fund from help local firm move from value chain speed up the flow of goods across the broader protect consumer from abuse through having a proper dispute settlement mechanism grievance handling mechanism crab regulation that stifle competition for sure we need to find out what are the different regulation which is actually creating a hindrance not letting a business to grow right so finding out those glitches in the system and the rules and regulation is also one of the function of the UNCTAD adapt to climate change and use natural resources more effectively to protect the environment another body which was there for protecting the preferential sharing system that is a generalized system of preference is again a part of the world trade organization they come up with various bodies and this is another example of the body which is coming up by the wto and the general generalized system of preference is the kind of a trading which is going to take place between developing countries and the developed countries right here what is going to happen in this generalized system of preference there are going to be a trading between developing and the developed nation right so let's look at us trade preference programs such as generalized system of preference provide opportunity for many world poorest country to use trade to grow their economy and climb out their poverty GSP is the largest with 15 member country and oldest 15 member countries are uh, very uh, like uh, Australia is a member country of it Belarus Canada is a member country of it one of the island European Union Japan Kazakhstan right uh, even the UK United Kingdom New Zealand Norway Russia Switzerland and USA these are the different country members of uh, GSP and it is one of the oldest US trade preference program established by Trade Act 1974 GSP promote economic development by eliminating duties on thousands of product and when promote import and they are promoting what import of uh, 119 designated beneficiary countries and the territories across the globe thus generalized system of preference is an umbrella that comprise the bulk of preferential schemes granted by industrialized nation to the developing countries it involved reduce reducing the most favored nation tariffs and duty free entry of eligible product exported by beneficiary country to the market of the donor countries right that means that is this is what mentioned here that is to the market of the donor country what you are doing the developing countries are marketing the product to the donor countries that means a flow of transaction is taking place from developing country to developed nation and that is how they are helping the country to grow their economy and climb out from the poverty another uh, type of uh, the preference system is gstp generalized system of trading and preference that, that that's a global system of trade preference among the developing country is a preferential trade agreement now this kind of the preference is taking place only between developing nations this this is this trading is only possible between developing nation and this kind of the uh, trading is taking place between developing nations developing nation and developed nation product flow flowing is from 
developing country to developed nation that is generalized system of preference. But another system which later been formed so that your country growth should also facilitate the nearby neighboring country or the developing country growth. So, they come up with a good system of trade preference among developing country that is the difference between GSP and GSTP. Since April uh, 13, April 1988 with the aim of increasing trade between developing country is the framework of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development uh, are taking place in the United region. The coverage of uh, GSTP extends to the tariff, para tariff, para tariff is an additional tariff, non tariffs are on the quantity, this is on the price, the direct trade measure including medium and long term contract and sectoral growth, these are the area of coverage of the GSTP. Now, another uh, international commodity agreement which is coming under the umbrella of WTO itself and the purpose again is to facilitate trade among different nations because alone WTO could not do by and large because it is a by and large body and there has to be some small small bodies across the globe so that they can see the executional problem and can find out the intermediate solutions and promote trade among the different level of the uh, countries. So, international commodity agreement is an undertaking by a group of countries to stabilize the trade, supply and policy of the commodity. An agreement usually involve a concerns of quantity traded price in the stock market. International commodity agreement have been applied to commodities like tin, cocoa, coffee, sugar and wheat and such kind of the products are usually coming from Africa, right. So, there are focusing more on on the export of the uh, minerals or the products you are rich in so that your economy can grow and flourish and deciding on acceptable range of price and output and this is uh, this have the this particular international commodity agreement is having the autonomy to decide on the price now let's talk about the uh, another pillar after knowing all the mechanism on the basis of which you can overcome the negatives of the balance of payment right and uh, they are they are facilitating ease in what export right by asking the different countries to reduce and lower lower their import duties by reducing their import duties and work on uh, facilitating more of more export so we have understood that these kind of the bodies are for facilitating the trade among different nations now we are heading towards the world bank and this is a body which is formed uh, in order to facilitate the devastated countries because of the world war, right. So, let us look at the World Bank how it actually came into being, let us have a fair understanding of it, let us look at the function of the World Bank which will make you understand that uh, how uh, different countries are getting benefited because of the formation of this World Bank and IMF. So, International Bank for Reconstruction and Development IBRD commonly known as World Bank was a result of Britain Wood Conference. Ideally, this uh, uh, when the Britain Wood Conference was taking place in Hampshire, US, USA, there was a twin formation. One was this World Bank and second body was formed as a IMF, International Monetary Fund. So, that is why most of the time it is also known as Twin Britain Wood Conference because it was the outcome of two international organization, one is the World Bank, second is the IMF. The purpose of World Bank formation is to en ensure the growth of the countries which has lost because of the war and IMF perspective is to focus on negative balance of payment country, whosoever is having negative balance of payment country, they are going to get the money from IMF. IBRD is extending the loan for sure, and, but they charge, I, I, whenever you are taking the loan under the IBRD, you have to pay the interest, you have to pay the uh, some uh, concessional charges, but there is another body of World Bank which is known as IDA, if you are taking a loan from IDA, there will be no interest and it is for long term as well, it is for longer duration of the time and there will be no interest. So, most of the countries are very happy enough and they get uh, they get the sense of understanding that if I would be taking a loan under IB, um, IDA, I do not even have to pay the interest. They are taking the loan for longer span of the time, maybe the maybe 80 years, 90 years, 
maybe 100 years, 60 years. So, depending upon the economic situation and the time it will take to grow and flourish, the World Bank is going to provide the loan to country to regain the economy which they have lost, maybe because of natural calamity or some war or some ter terrorist attack. Now, let us look into the main objective behind setting up this international organization were to aid task of reconstruction of war affected economy of Europe and assess the development of underdeveloped nation. Right? So, whosoever is affected by the war, whosoever economy is being torn by the war, the perspective of this world war particularly to the Europe initially they were focusing on the Europe more. Why they were focusing more on Europe? Because actually war was taking place from eastern and western side of the Europe only and it become a main center point for the people to fight in Europe and Europe was badly affected because of first and second world war. So, when this uh, World Bank was constituted the purpose main purpose is to help European countries and nearby con European countries and the nearby continent people who have been badly affected by the war. For the first few years, the World Bank remained preoccupied with the task of restoring the war torn nations in the Europe. Initially, when it was formed till 1950s, I think they were just focusing on what? Focusing on taking care of European countries, and just after that, they start looking into the underdeveloped nation. That is very obvious because World Bank was initially formed to take care of uh, the countries being economically devastated because of the war. So, they first focus on their main priority that is to take care of the countries of the Europe who have been badly affected by the war and the moment they start realizing that now Europe has taken the pace, they started improving their economy, now they are on the right track, they move their direction towards the next priority, that next priority is toward the underdeveloped nation. To give shape to this investment aspect in underdeveloped uh, nations, the International Development Association was also formed in 1960, right. The, uh, there are certain five institutions, actually the World Bank is a group of five different institutions. One is the IBRD giving loan with certain uh, charges, they are an IDA is another with don't, uh, which extend the financial support without any interest and that too for a longer span of the time. There are body who are facilitating the finance, they are the body who are facilitating certain multi-trade uh, uh, lateral ex uh, agreements and existence and guarantee agencies. There are inter international center for settlement of investment dispute also. So, all these five body together form what? When you sum up them, this become a world bank. So, five different body constitute the world bank. The main objective underlying setting up of IDA has been to provide loan on concessional terms, concessional terms and condition to those country whose per capita income are below critical level. That means IDA would be providing the loan at a very concessional rate and that to only the poor countries are going to get benefit of this. Now, let us look at the entire structure of the World Bank. That is, the interna it's an international financial institution provide loan and grants to the government low and middle income for the purpose of, of having pursuing the capital projects. Headquarter is in Washington DC. President is David Malpass, founded in 1944 at Brittonwood, New Hampshire, United States. Motto is to protect or make the country free from the poverty, right? Currently, the members are 189 International Finance Corporation and more are the subsidiaries of it. Just we have seen there are five different subsidiaries, IBRD, IDA, IFC, MIGA and ICSID are the subsidiaries of the World Bank. Parent organization is United Nations World Bank Group. Now, who funds the World Bank? It's actually the developed nations are funding in World Bank. World Bank gets its fund from rich countries, right? That's why they get more attention also. Whenever World Bank want to sanction some money to India, it goes via developed nation to us, right? That is why because they are the donors, they are funding maximum amount to the World Bank. As well as from the issuance of the bonds on the world capital market, the World Bank serve two mandate to end the extremities of the poverty and by reducing share on the global population and live in extreme poverty who are living below 3% 3, uh, 3 by they are targeting to attain this situation by 2030. Membership of the World Bank is a 
membership is a by default membership of IMF like the whosoever is a member of IMF will by default become a member of the World Bank until unless the country specify that I don't want to be a member of the World Bank I just want to be a member of IMF so it's a mem membership comes from the IMF the to become a member of bank under the IBRD article agreement the country first joins the International Monetary Fund and it automatically become a member of World Bank now what IMF is as you already know it is supporting those country having negative BOP negative BOP means imports are high and exports are low right this is this idea is already there with you so IMF is the second international organization why it is a second international organization because first one is the World Bank Pella international organization concept this is the World Bank which was formed in uh, during that Britain Wood conference so this was the first international organization and IMF becomes the second international organization it is the organization of 190 country working to foster global monetary cooperation secure financial stability facilitate international trade promote high employment sustainable economic growth and it's another is to reduce the poverty for sure if they would be helping country uh, financially and uh, the country start getting the fund and start reconstructing the economy start investing in the market for sure the people start getting the jobs people start earning money and eventually the poverty will be checked upon the IMF is the most detailed attempt to organize the conduct of international monetary fund now let's look at the objectives of the IMF international monetary cooperation that means the perspective is to cooperate the with various different nations who are having negative balance of payment who are, are not able to find the solution to overcome this vicious cycle of uh, maximum import and low of export so they try to facilitate the monetary support with certain terms and condition and let the people and even assist the people that this can be the solution to your economy this can be the solution but there are certain criticism that people used to say that they have only one solution for all the different nation they don't do make their, their uh, close assessment of the economy of different nation so that is a criticism usually come from the critics but by and large what IMF is doing IMF is trying to provide uh, assistance to the member nation and letting the people know that okay fine we are lending money to you but you have to imply or you have to execute this solution into your country which will help you to further uh, regain the economy which you have lost and this what happened in case of our case in our country 1991 we adopted the liberalization privatization and globalization and policy to facilitate expansion and balance growth of international trade to promote exchange stability higher employment and income exchange restriction to be reduced right that has to be reduced otherwise there will be no facilitation of export so you have to facilitate that there should be more of exchange taking place aid to member during the emergency aid to shorten the duration and less degree of disequilibrium in the international payment of uh, international payment of the member country that was the prime focus of IMF let's look at the structure how it is actually functioning there are the member countries of the IMF at the top then there is going to be the board of governors these are the representatives coming from the member countries and then there are executive body who is who is becoming a part of uh, the IMF through uh, the selection and managing director is on the basis of the voting and their job is going to be taken uh, as uh, they are certain assessors of the managing director the first deputy they are going to be the additional deputy and they are going to be the joint deputy to us the managing director in terms of execution of proper uh, uh, sub supply of the fund to the devastated country now how you can become a member of IMF there are two type of the member of IMF one is the original member second one is the ordinary member original members are those who become a part of IMF during the Britain Wood conference it itself and we Indians are the original members of IMF we agreed upon all the terms and condition during uh, that Britain Wood conference right which was taking place in the year 1994 1944 so original member those country who represent to res representative took part in Britain Wood conference and who agreed to be the member of the fund prior 19 uh, so, uh, that is uh, uh, before its formation 31st December 1945 that is 1944 ordinary members are those who become a member of IMF subsequently IMF is holding a authority to make you a member or to suspend your membership 
at any point of time if you are not adhering to the conditions or the le lessons or the learning IMF is trying to impart on the basis of the fund they have given to you right if you are not adhering to it if you are not following the terms and condition you may your membership may be suspended. Now what are the sources of the fund of the IMF they will be getting the fund from the quota system quota is allocated to the various member now what is quota that it is like a subscription amount every member country has to pay to the IMF and depending upon the economy of the nation right your quota is going to be fixed if you are an underdeveloped nation your quota is going to be small if you are developing is going to be comparatively high when you are a developed nation it is going to be more and if your quota subscription amount is high what is going to happen you have you will be having more voting rights so those who are paying more are having more voting rights as compared to those who are belonging to be a part of the underdeveloped nation or developing nation they are paying less as a subscription amount to IMF they are having less voting rights. So it is mentioned here when country join it, uh, the fund it is signed a quota that govern the size of its subscription its voting power and its drawing rights. So the larger you pay larger would be the voting rights larger would be your drawing rights aap jitna zyada pay karenge utna zyada aap imf se le sakte hain as i was in a previous slide i was also talking about some criticism many observer comment on the fact that imf has one size fit for all ek hi lathi se sabko haakna that is that they have a mentality that this in to take care or nurture the economy of the entire world there is only one solution which is not true. So that is one of the criticism. IMF does not adequately monitor the impact of its decision on the poor. So whatever the decision you are taking, whatever the economic upliftment suggestions you might be giving to the underdeveloped or the poor nation, you are supposed to monitor also that whatever the course of action I asked them to do, okay fine they have been good enough, they started executing what you stated, but you have to monitor whether things are going in the right direction or not that kind of feedback or follow system follow up system is missing in IMF. Some of US critics says IMF is incre incredibly wasteful organization that take valuable fund pour it down to the drain of developing economy whose leader become flabbously rich of the money uh, rich of the money without any intention ever helping out anyone this is what the US people are saying why people are saying so because they are funding more to IMF. They are having more voting rights, they are having more drawing rights. But what the people say that I being a developed nation, I never, I am not undergoing any crisis. I don't need uh, my fund to be withdrawn from the IMF. I am contributing year after year. But who is getting benefit? These developing nations are getting benefit. They are taking the money, they are withdrawing the money from IMF. And uh, the, the leaders of the different developing nations are filling up their pocket. They are not actually putting those money in the society. This is what the critics from the US people is coming up. IMF member how it has benefited India. Uh, the financial assistance is coming from the, uh, the, this IMF fund, right? Help in foreign exchange crisis, membership of the World Bank become possible once you become a member of IMF as I told you earlier that it, in order to become a member of World Bank you need to be first the member of IMF then automatically you become a member of World Bank. Economic consultation is also coming because of that economic consultation we took the correct action in the year 1991 of accepting LPG policy. This is the loan given to, I, uh, given to India by IMF in the different years but the happy part is this that we are now the contributor in the year 2000 the loan taken up from international monetary fund has been completed India is now the contributor to IMF that is a good part because of the economic consultation we received from IMF we executed it and the situation improved and what eventually happened we able to repay off all the loan which we took from IMF and now we become a significant contributor to IMF. Now relationship of India with IMF, relationship between IMF and India has grown strong over the year. In fact, the country has turned into the creditor of IMF. A moment before I just told you that they become a creditor to IMF. They are contributing, they are putting up their fund there. India and IMF must continue to boost their relationship as it proved to be advantageous for both IMF as well as the country like us, India. International Monetary Fund or IMF predict lower growth in India, economic concentration in US, Japan and Europe 
Euro region next year, calling for further interest rate cut and fiscal stimulus. This is what the IMF keep on predicting about the different nations, their member nations that what could be your devastating situation. So be alert, start taking corrective actions, right? This is the scenario where you are finding that certain accumulation is taking place in developed nations, right? Why not you people are putting up your stances and improving your economic situation? So such kind of suggestions and economic consultation is also coming up from IMF. Now let's uh, conclude that that financial institution provide long term finance, which are not provided by commercial bank. The funds are made available even during the period of depression when other source of finance are not available. Obtaining loan from financial institution increase the goodwill of the borrowing in the capital market. Right? So, somehow what we observe that the, the presence of financial institution is very important. Why? Because it is not only that they are going to fund you the money, it is also that they are going to facilitate you with some consultation. They are going to update you with some ideas and those ideas are going to be proved so significant for your country to grow and flourish. Right? There are various countries who can you can take an example of have been suffering very badly but now they are improving on their economic status. You take an example of the Greece, right? Greece, Greece what Greece was go undergoing through, they are undergoing through economic crisis. Various European investors and the private investors invested around 320, they invested 320 billion euros in the Greece to overcome the economic crisis. And so far, they are able to only repay back it this much of euros, right? That means by the uh, they still need to in uh, they need they still need to pay off lot of money to these uh, private investors or the various other funding institutions. They need to pay off lot of money, but at least at the time of the crisis, I was having some body to get the financial support. Greece was totally declared as a bankrupt, but still different nations, different investors, financial institutions are coming together to nurture and support and provide the custodial support to the Greece economy to regain the lost economy. For this, I think like uh, the Greece is a very good example, Venezuela is a very good example and during the 2008 crisis in America, again the World Bank came into picture and helped America to overcome such a devastating uh, situation, economic crisis and because of the crisis in America, even India also suffered from loss of, loss, a lot of slowdown in India during the year 2008. So, taking care of our economy, nurturing the economy of different nations, it's a good idea, but there has to have certain support system also and such kind of in financial institutions are actually extending their support to nurture and support the economy of different nations without any discrimination on the basis of your economic status. Let's quickly review the different topics that we had discussed today. Today we talked about World Trade Organization, we talked about United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, we talked about International Commodity Agreements, Generalized System of Preference, we talked about Goods and Service Trade practice Preferences, we even talked about the World Bank and IMF. So, all togetherly now we have understood that the every single thing is revolving around maintaining the balance of payment. All these measures being taken up by the various member country is to control the balance of payment of a country, facilitating more of export and controlling of import is the perspective. These are the different books that I have referred for delivering the today's lecture. I hope you all are clear with each and every concept that we had discussed today. Thank you all of you and all the best.
Hello, I am A.K. Sharma and I teach sociology in IIT Kanpur. Uh, I am trying to answer a simple question, how sociologists explain their facts. As you know that uh, sociology was developed as a subject dealing with human behavior, but which would use the tools and techniques of science, mathematics, physics, chemist chemistry. But this view that uh, human behavior needs to be studied scientifically has been contradicted later on and it was said that simply by relating one kind of facts with other kinds of facts, you cannot understand human behavior to, to understand human behavior or to actually theorize about human behavior. You have to theorize the theories or motivations or meanings that people have in their mind uh, in involving in a particular action. Uh, using these two traditions, one tradition in which we relate one fact of society with other facts scientifically and another tradition in which we try to develop second order constructs or theories of theories that people have in their mind in acting in day to day life. Now, they have produced two different traditions in sociology. One is called quantitative, another is called qualitative. Quantitative methodology uses scientific methods of conducting surveys, censuses, experiments uh, and uh, then by using statistical methods from simple method like uh, arithmetic mean uh, to sophisticated methods like logistic regression, we try to arrive at uh, some inference. Qualitative tradition, qualitative methodology on the other hand uses ethnographic approach and here the researcher uh, attempts to become part of the community which he or she intends to study because the assumption is that only by becoming part of the community, by living among the people whom you are studying and by putting yourself in their shoes, by trying to understand things or their environment or their behavior or their culture or festivals or economic behavior or politics from their angle, from their perspective, how they feel, what, what understanding they carry in their mind that only by understanding these things we can understand facts of society. Actually in one of the latest works, uh, World Bank you know, which uses a lot of statistics has also talked about uh, understanding mental models that people use in involving in behavior. Emile Durkheim long back said that sociology uses comparative method and let me just give one example and uh, then I will finish. Suppose I tell you that infant mortality rate in India is 40 what does it mean? It means nothing. But when you compare infant mortality of India today with Japan and you find that Japan has 2 and India has 40, then you get disturbed. Then you start thinking why is it that infant mortality in India is so high. And then you can also compare infant mortality of India with infant mortality of say Kenya or Mozambique or other countries and you find that uh, these countries have much higher infant mortality than India. And then you can uh, create a hypothesis that perhaps uh, econo economic development has something to do with infant mortality. Countries which are more developed, countries like Japan, they have low infant mortality. Countries like Mozambique or Kenya, which are less developed, have higher infant mortality. So, you have a connection. This is what sociology is about connection between facts. So, by using census, surveys, by conducting field work, by using ethnographic methods, by using comparative methods, 
we arrive at sociological findings. Use of experimental method in sociology has been very less, uh, but I learned that recently economists which I 10 years ago I could not uh, uh, see that economists will one day use experimental method, but today we find that economists are using lot of experimental methods to study human behavior. Now, this work may be done by economists, but the findings of their study can very well be called sociological studies. So, sociology tomorrow, uh, 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 I think that sociology tomorrow in addition to uh, using surveys and comparative methods will also be using experimental methods. Thank you.